Uh, so I'm joined with Church Friends all the way from Louisville, Kentucky. How's it going, fellas? Hey, how you doing? Good. Um, first things first, can y'all hear me okay? Yeah, coming through loud and clear. Okay, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I hear y'all as well. Uh, thank y'all for being on the show. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, of course. Happy to be here. All right. Um, so, before I get into the questions, um, every time when I interview, like, a band or a group, I like to do, like, a roll call. So, you know, the listeners that's listening live or listening on the replay know who's in the call. So uh, introduce yourselves individually, and what role do y'all play in the band? Who wants to go first? What's up, man? My name is Trey. I play the uh, drums for the group, and that's and that's about it. I probably do the least of anybody, so I'll pass it on. <laughs> hey, man. I'm Aaron. I play keys, sometimes guitar, uh, backup vocals. That's about it. Uh, hey, I'm Connor. Uh, I play bass, uh, sometimes guitar, and vocals. I'm Grant. I play guitar and sometimes bass and vocals. <laughs> That's all. All right, four members of Church Friends, and I have them all here on Chilling with Jeff and Kenny C. Happy to have y'all on here. Appreciate y'all for being on the show. Uh, I first heard of you fellas. Through a a fellow Louisville artist, and I, you made me familiar with this guy. Uh, he's go by the name of One Meal, uh, talented hip hop artist. Uh, he's got a label, and y'all have been linked up with him. Uh, and I've always vouched for Louisville music scene. So much talent in uh, in Louisville. So with y'all fellas being part of this incredible scene, like, how does it feel just to be surrounded by so many talented musicians in Louisville? Well, uh, for starters, we're we're on Ramel's record label, so uh, it's really wonderful to be a part of that team. Um, he's definitely done a lot of a lot of awesome stuff for us the past what year or so that we've been on there. Um, shout out to Creative Native. He just got a tattooed on the forearm, so shout out to Ramel for that. Um, super tough. But yeah, man, it feels great. It, we definitely are all the time seeing different Louisville artists coming out. Uh, a lot of different genres, too. Hip-hop, you guys know. I mean, Jack Harlow definitely blew up yeah. in the past couple of years. There's some others on the way, too. Definitely other people in his crew that are blowing up um, the private garden crew. And then also definitely if you look around, you'll see other, other genres of music that are starting to pop up too. There's a good psychedelic rock scene. There's a lot of hard rock or like hardcore that we don't get into as much. At least I don't, but uh, we definitely have played shows with them. They're all really cool people. Always a lot of fun. Um, and definitely like the, some of the highest energized crowds we've seen. For sure. You guys want to add on that? Yeah, all in all, that's it. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, you're good, man. Go on. All right, cool. Uh, I really enjoy, I've been a fan of the psychedelic rock type music for the past several years now. Um, I live in Lexington, and there's some talented, you know, artists that, you know, foot similar to y'all i'm a fan of a band by the name of driftwood gypsy uh they uh, introduced me to that type of music and i really fell in love with it and then when i start here you fellas y'all sound incredible um y'all have a um new song out recently and it's called flower girl um yeah and i played that song a little bit earlier Definitely enjoyed it. Um, what was oh, it like? You. What was it like recording that song? Um, talk about the whole process of recording. You want to speak to that? Sure. Uh, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> like, we basically we we cut it. We started 
doing it live. Like we cut the first foundation track live and then we went back and uh, overdubbed everything on top of the drums. So it's kind of got, for the most part, the foundation at least kind of has a uh, live energy to it. And then, um, yeah, and then we pretty much just layered in instrument. We layered in our normal instruments and then added vocals and then layered there's a lot of vocal layering and experimentation. Um, there's a lot of uh, the instrumental section uh, in the uh, in the song was like a lot of experimentation until it got to that point. Uh, so like it was changed around and that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I'm, uh, is there anything like specific you want to know about the recording process? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I definitely enjoyed the song. Not very, a uh, very cool appeal to it. Um, it just, it just had a nice vibe to it, you know. Uh, and I've heard some of your old songs as well. I definitely enjoyed those as well. Flower Girls is definitely one of my favorite songs of the year. I really think of any genre. It's just, it was, it just sounds so good. Just all thought through put together and it just it is a feel good song that's that's the type of stuff i love feel good song for sure yeah, yeah i appreciate that thanks man absolutely uh and that song is available on all digital music platforms uh so show your support give that song a stream give it a purchase as well and when you get through with that then you can tell your friends to do the same thing it's like clockwork. Um, you do it, someone else do it. It's, it's a win-win for everybody. You enjoy the music, they feel the love, and they get paid too. So definitely <laughs> give that uh, flower girl a stream and a purchase. Uh, so with this song already out, what's next for Church Friends in the coming months as we draw near the end of 2020. What else y'all have in the works as far as maybe more new music on the works, maybe some shows perhaps? What's next for Church Friends? Uh, well, we'll start with new music. Um, so we actually just uh, finalized the date uh, of our full-length album, first full-length album. Uh, it'll be October 30th. So here in just a couple of weeks actually. Um, so that'll be out real soon. We are in the works on trying to get a show together. Uh, currently we're, we are playing a benefit on November 7th. Um, but we don't have any further info on that quite yet. Um, so just refer to our uh, Instagram at church.friends for more info in the future on that one. Awesome. Uh, so go um, check that out, church.friends on an Instagram. They are on Twitter at the church friends. I like the, just to make sure it's <laughs> actually y'all. Um, so it's like either the will or the official. Like that, that's when you know that that's y'all. That's, that's legit. Um, yeah, the church friends. Um, get it right, people. Get it right. <laughs> um, so, the uh, one thing I admire about you know bands is like the camaraderie, like the brotherhood or sisterhood, just traveling with each other, get familiar with each other. You know, it goes beyond. You know, the music is friendship, is bond. Uh, like, mm -hmm. how did Church Friends became a band? How did that came about? So I think it probably started uh, with the fact that Grant and Aaron are both brothers, so they kind of grew up in the same house playing instruments and things of that nature together. And uh, Aaron's friend from church when he was a kid was Connor, so it was a logical next step to start playing music with him. And then uh, me and Grant had started uh, playing music together in the high school marching band context back at male high school and uh, we kind of just progressed through some different projects until we landed here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, church friends, 
Um, good feel, good band, very talented. Be on the lookout for the album, October the 30th. Now we know the official date of the album. So uh, go check that out. Uh, um, until then, again, uh, Flower Girl, that's the, uh, the latest single that's out uh, right now. Uh, and big thanks to Spotify for putting y'all on my release radar. Uh, so I, I see Flower Girl on my, the list of released songs. Uh, I am a Spotify addict, and I've been listening to music there a lot. Uh, so I don't apologize for that whatsoever. Uh, Spotify is my go-to platform for music. I know people have mixed feelings about it for obvious reasons. Uh, I try to, you know, listen to other platforms, but Spotify is my go-to platform as far as music. And I listen to Bandcamp too. Um, <laughs> speaking of, uh, um, which, um, how, who are some of your musical influences, uh, whether as a band or whether, uh, collectively as a band, like who inspired church friends, uh, musically though, so, you know, it could be mainstream, it could be independent, local, like who inspired y'all, uh, as, as a group? Um, I mean, there's definitely local bands, like local music that continues to inspire us. We have a lot of friends around the local scene, uh, kind of like what I mentioned earlier. Uh, but as far as the bands and as far as like uh, influences we have, I'd say growing up and even um, just to continue to listen to throughout the years, we definitely all love the dead. There's never too much uh, Grateful Dead in our house. And there's always enough live performances to listen to. So I'd say we've all been listening to the, to the Grateful Dead for um, multiple years, taking influence from them. We all also love uh, Anderson Pock. Um, definitely have been following him for a while. I really like, there's this band called Hiatus Coyote that's mm -hmm. from Australia. They're really great if you haven't listened to them. Uh, that's one of my main influences personally. Uh, I know Connor likes them a lot too because their vocals yeah. are incredible. Yeah, big vocal influence there. Um, and My Morning Jacket also, another local band. Yeah, uh, Jim James was definitely a big influence on Connor's vocals, I would say. Um, and he's been, uh, we've been listening to Jim James around the house for definitely a long time too. Even when I was young, me and Grant listened to Jim James and My Morning Jacket growing up. Um, I'm sure the other guys did too. Uh, what else do we like, you guys? I think most of the bases. That's the bases. Yeah. We definitely have a hip hop influence. Too. Yeah, me and Trey listen to a lot of hip hop. Connor does too. Uh, Grant does here and there. I feel like, but me and Trey are big into hip hop for sure. Um, Trey, what are your main hip hop influences? Yeah, that's a tough question. Um, that's a really tough question. Currently, I would say I'm listening to a lot of uh, Mac Miller. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's for all of us. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I am really am a huge fan of Anderson Pack. Like these oh, yeah. past few years and these previous albums he's been putting out. Like he's one of those artists I really have to see perform in person. Like this mm -hmm. dude can he can sing, he can rap. He can play oh, yeah. instrument, multiple instruments. He's the type of dude I would I would like to see in his Super Bowl performance. Like he would kill it. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. He would, uh, <laughs> the he dude could just literally do everything. Like he he could be a one man band for all I know. With mm -hmm. all the yeah. talents. No doubt. Yes. Uh definitely a fan of Anderson Pack. Um so he's he's he is Definitely one of my favorite musicians currently um, with his versatility as an artist. And that's really what I really like more of artists these days is showing they more than one dimensional. They can do more than one thing. So, so props to him to all the artists that's stepping out of that limelight and doing more. 
uh, musically, really putting themselves out there musically. Uh, so, fellas, it was great chatting with y'all. Having all four members of Church Friends, which is pretty epic. I usually get like one person on behalf of the band, and everyone else has to work, and I understand that. Even with this pandemic, you got to work, get that money. I get that. Mm. But uh, yeah. to have all four of y'all on this this interview is pretty cool. Um, so thank you all for being on. And I know Thank you so much for having me. Good to be here. So yeah, great chatting with y'all. Don't forget, Flower Girl is the single. It's out right now, all digital music platforms. And be on the lookout for that new studio album coming out just on the eve of Halloween. So before you get to all the trick-or-treating and the candy, social distancing, of course, uh, <laughs> you can uh, <laughs> go, buy, uh, go buy this album. If you love Flower Girl, you're going to love this album. From start to finish. No skips. No skips. No skips. Uh, no skips. So uh, continue success, fellas. I look forward to our talk.